Hi guys and welcome in this quant trading tutorial for beginners. The goal of this video is not to do complex trading models or stuff like that, but to understand the underlying logic that you will use in all your algorithmic trading strategies. And if you want to go deeper in algorithmic and quantitative trading after this video, you can take a look to the AlphaQuant program, the link is in the description, and you will have access to an amazing discount thanks to the Black Friday. I will not go into the details, you can check the description if you want, but this program combines e-learning videos, 7 day of a 7 support to help you master quantitative trading very quickly. So let's switch directly into the code, we will not code together this time because the more important is the explanation, but if you want to download the code and play a bit with it to better understand it, you can take a look and find the link into the description. In this video, we will see three things. The difference between simple and compound interest, the dark side of the compound interest, and why 99% of the backtests you see on the internet are false. So first of all, we will need some libraries, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Yfinance to download the data for our third part. First of all, we'll talk about the difference between simple and compound interest. But for that, we need to simulate some returns. We'll not simulate very complex return, we just simulate the return of a trading strategy based on a take profit and a stop loss exit. And so we'll have a fixed return equal to the average return. Here is 1% and here we have the cost. And be careful, here we need to remove the cost for the take profit and for the stop loss. It's very important. And so if we plot our returns all of the time, we can see that we have always the two same numbers, 0.90% and minus 1.10% because of the costs. And here I have chosen just for the beginning to have a 60% hit ratio, so winning trade. And so now the question is, how can we compute the cumulative returns? There are two ways to compute the cumulative return. First of all, the cumulative returns based on the simple interest. It means that each time you will enter or quit the market, you will use always the same volume. That's very important. That's why you can just sum all different returns. As it is always based on the same volume, mathematically, you need to additionate the different percentage. It means that if you are using a trading strategy in live trading and you want to use the simple interest capitalization, you will always use the same volume. I will always invest $100 without taking into account my current capital. On the other end, for the compound interest, it's the opposite. I will take always a percentage of my current capital. For example, if I always take 1% of my capital, I will invest a dynamic amount into the market because each time I will earn money, lose money, it will modify the volume I will use for the next trade. And so for this one, we need to multiply the multiplicator coefficient of each return with the others and we move one. With that, I will have the cumulative returns based on a compound interest. Even if you will use always the same way to compute the different capitalization, it's important to understand a bit the underlying logic. Here, for example, as we have a very good situation, the compound interest is much, much better than the simple interest. But as we can see, when we have a drawdown there, it's sometimes much higher with the compound interest. That's because if you lose, for example, 1%, then 1%, then 1%, and you have lost 50% of your capital, let's say, it will be much harder to come back to break even because if you had 100 dollars, you have lost 50 dollars and you invest always based on the current capital from 50 to 100, you need to double your capital. So to make plus 100% and not plus 50%, even if you have lost only 50%. But in the other side, in the simple interest, if you risk always $1 or $2 of your capital, you will risk the same thing if you have $50 or $100. So it will be much easier to come back to break even because if you lose 50%, you just need to earn 50% to be at break even. Saying that, you can say that the simple interest is better. But on the other side, when you have a constant growth, and it's very important to insist on this point, a constant growth, the compound interest is much better. As you can see, 
at the end, we have earned much more with the compound interest there. But that's because in our assumption, we have used a 40-60 probability. It means that our win rate is equal to 60%. Moreover, here, we can see that we will balance our risk over a lot of trades. Here, 2000. And that's a huge advantage of the algorithmic and quantitative traders. Because for the discretionary traders, they need to take each trade manually. So they want to have a higher return and they need to take a higher risk because they are limited in the trade numbers they can take. It is there that you can have an advantage. You will have a small hedge for each trade and you will have a lot of different trades. Here, for example, if we go in the next session, so the compound interest dark side, and we take same parameters. I have just removed the cost, but keep in mind that it's very important to take the cost into account. Here, I have divided the number of trades by 10 and I have multiplied the average return by 10. It means that at the end, if we keep the same number of trades, we should maybe have the same return. And it's really not the case. Because when we have too much losses, as I said before, it's very difficult for the compound interest to come back. And so here, as we can see, for the simple interest is much easier to grow with this unstable environment. So to choose your capitalization, you need to take into account the strength and the weaknesses of each capitalization. And you can also combine both. For example, use always the same amount, but once you have earned, I don't know, 20 times the amount you are investing, you can increase a bit this amount. So it's like a combination of simple and compound interest. So that's the first very important thing that you need to keep in mind when you are working to a trading strategy. Do you prefer to have a smallest number of trades with a huge risk and a huge potential return or you want to balance your risk over a lot of trades? And as you might understood, my opinion on that is to use a lot of trades because as we can see there, it's much more profitable. So the first part and the second part was about the simple interest and the compound interest dark side. The third part will be why 99% of the backtest on the internet are wrong. And there are a lot of different answers for that. The first one is that you can very easily create a false backtest. Just you simulate some returns like I did and you say that it's your backtest. That's really the worst thing to do, of course, but you can find something like that on the internet. The second one is just to over-optimize your backtest. And there are a lot of different possibilities to do so. You can do your machine learning models in the wrong way. You can incorporate a look-headed base into your technical indicators. You can just repeat your process a lot of time. Let me explain. If you take your trading strategy, you backtest it, it's not good. You come back into the past and you change the parameters. Then it's a bit better, but you come back and you optimize again. You come back, you optimize again until you find the best combination, it's a strategy that is over-optimized. It means that the backtest is amazing, but when you will go in live trading, it will not be profitable. And if you want to know more about how to do a very correct backtest, a scientific backtest, you can take a look to the YouTube playlist I have already done, the scientific backtesting guide. And if you want the ready-to-use template, just take a look to the AlphaQuant program. So now let's come back to the code. First, I import some data from Yahoo Finance. I do not recommend you to use Yahoo Finance to train your machine learning models or to backtest your trading strategies, but here it's really just to give you a quick example. So I have open, high, low, close, and volume. And now we'll trade a very simple moving averages based trading strategy. The goal is to create two moving averages, a fast and a slow one and to be in buying position when the fast is above the slow one and the opposite when the fast is below the slow one, we are into a selling position. Once we have created the return of the trading strategy, we'll just plot the cumulative returns. Here, as we can see, it's not really stable and over seven years, we have done only 200% on the Bitcoin with a very high risk, so it's really not good. So. That's the result I can have if I backtest only one time my trading strategy, okay? Like we should do, okay? I really insist on this point. 
like we should do. But here I will not go into the detail about how to backtest your trading strategies in the best way possible. I'm just here to give you an example that if I want, instead of giving you this backtest, for example, to do a YouTube video or to sell you a trading bot or something like that, I can really upgrade this backtest. Of course, it's really not a scientific way to do it. It's really not a good way. And it's, in my opinion, exactly like if you lie about your trading strategy. But a very easy way to do it is just to test here all the possible combination, for example, from 1 to 100 and from 100 to 200 for our two parameters, fast moving average and slow moving average. Once I have all my different values, I see that two 119 are the best parameters for this period only. And so I just got there and I say, okay, I have optimized my trading strategies. I have the best parameters. Now it is what I'm able to do. And all the people will be like, oh, wonderful. How can you do that? But the reality is that you will nearly never have these performances in live trading. And that's why backtest is a very tricky tool because in the same time, it's amazingly powerful. You can test a lot of different things. You can optimize for real your trading strategy parameters. You can test the robustness of your trading strategy. You can really understand it and make some prediction about the future. But on the other end, if you have some bad intention, you can really create false results very easily. So that's why you always need to keep a critical mind when you see some trading strategies backtests on the internet. It's pretty important because you will see this amazing backtest and you will say, oh no, my trading strategy that has only 20 or 30% of return a year is very bad because other people has 1000% a year. But if your trading strategy do 20 or 30% a year in live trading, it's amazing because their trading strategy will never do 500% or 1000% a year. So that was a very quick course. If you want to go deeper, feel free to tell me into the comment the subject you want that I abort into one of the next videos and to drop also all the questions that you have and see you soon in the next video.